Green hydrogen has been at the forefront of the conversation recently. I'm sure you've seen many of the hydrogen stocks soaring higher and higher, with COP26 just behind us, and the discussion about global decarbonisation here and now. The question is, what role with hydrogen, and particularly greener hydrogen play, moving forward? Today we're going to discuss a few different ASX hydrogen stocks that could be interesting ones to add to your watch list as the discussion surrounding green hydrogen and a decarbonised society becomes more and more important over this next decade. Before we dive in and explore these different companies, it makes sense for us to take a step back and think about why hydrogen? Why is it so important and why has it been attracting so much attention? If you do enjoy this video, don't forget to hit the like button, feel free to share it out. We make daily videos, so if you're new here, welcome. Make sure you've subscribed and turn your bell notifications on as well, so you won't miss any of our daily episodes. So question number one, why hydrogen? Hydrogen already is currently used quite broadly with many industrial use cases. However, hydrogen is more and more being considered, particularly green hydrogen, as a potential alternative to help to decarbonise difficult industries and regions. Of course, we know renewable energy will definitely be playing at the forefront of the transition towards clean energy and a decarbonised society. But renewable energy does not work for every sector. And of course, renewable energy is not abundant in every region. And this is where individuals might be thinking about why hydrogen can serve as that alternative solution. Hydrogen itself is actually the most abundant element in the universe. However, hydrogen is not found alone. It's always paired with other molecules and it's the actual splitting apart or the extraction of hydrogen that is the more difficult part at the moment. Hydrogen itself is actually a clean burning molecule. However, current incumbent processes like brown hydrogen or gray hydrogen do emit CO2. And so even though the actual use of hydrogen, once it has been extracted, may be carbon emission free, the embodied energy of the entire process unfortunately is not. And this is where there's been a lot of attention focused on how can we bring down the embodied energy of the hydrogen extraction process, which ultimately means it could be used as that clean burning molecule. There are a broad range of use cases for hydrogen, from energy production to potential fuel cells for large vehicles, whether it's ships, whether it's trucks, whether it's trains. There may be alternative uses for hydrogen fuel cells where current incumbent lithium ion battery cells may not actually be the best solution for them. And of course, there's a wide range of industry applications. There's considerations about where hydrogen can fit in that gap. And that is where all the attention is at the moment. If we can bring down the embodied energy of hydrogen through green hydrogen or other alternative solutions, we could bring down and move towards a decarbonized society more broadly. I'd love to know your thoughts on it all, so drop in a comment below what you think about green hydrogen, what you think about the hydrogen sector more broadly, and where do you think it heads from here moving forward. And so before diving into some of the top ASX hydrogen stocks to watch over this next period, we do need to spend a little bit of time reflecting on the colours of the hydrogen rainbow. I'm sure you might have heard of brown hydrogen, grey hydrogen, green hydrogen, but you might be wondering what do they actually mean? So brown hydrogen is produced through coal gasification, while grey hydrogen is produced through a process called steam methane reformation. There's actually an alternative of grey hydrogen, which is blue hydrogen, still leverages steam methane reformation. However, it has carbon capture technology, which means that the carbon that is emitted through the process is actually ca captured. So of course, that is much better for the environment than where it's traditionally just let off and emitted out into the environment. However, a lot of the attention at the moment is on green hydrogen. It leverages a process called electrolysis, which utilizes an electrolyzer to split out hydrogen and oxygen from water. Of course, what's interesting about green hydrogen is when you utilize renewable energy to power the electrolyzer in that whole process, you get a carbon emission free process and ultimately you end up with green hydrogen. And that's where a lot of the focus is on at the moment. If you are interested in a bit of a deeper dive into the hydrogen sector, some of the demand drivers behind it, and why there's a lot of interest in the hydrogen sector, we've done a video onto this before, which we'll leave a link to up above that you can check out after this one. And before we do dive in, note that the current stocks that we look into, they're not stock recommendations, the channel's not financial advice. These are just interesting companies that you could potentially add to your watch list as a starting spot for you to do your own research from. These are, of course, not comprehensive deep dives. They're just initial looks into these companies. And hopefully you find them interesting, but I'd love to know your thoughts and which companies you're looking at into the hydrogen sector. So up first, Province Resources. ASX PRL are developing the Zero Carbon Hydrogen Project. It's got the nickname of High Energy and it's leveraging electrolysis, as we just discussed previously. What's interesting about Province Resources Project is it's located in the Gascoigne region, which truly is primed for renewable energy. The area is one of the windiest locations within Western Australia, and it, of course it's very sunny as well, which means it has a great opportunity for renewable energy generation, which of course is critical through the process of electrolysis and the production of green hydrogen as we discussed. So what's drawn a lot of attention to ASX PRL over this past year is their landmark partnership agreement with Total Iran. 
Total are a global leader in the renewable space. They're an independent power producer and IPP. They've now got an agreement with where Total will build the upstream generation facility, of course, utilizing this prime location for renewable energy. But then they have a 50-50 joint venture for the downstream hydrogen processing and distribution of the green hydrogen that will be produced. This, of course, is an interesting dynamic. As mentioned, Total is one of the leading global players. They're a huge company. And so having this backing is fantastic for the financial side of it. But of course, it's significant validation of the opportunity opportunity in the project too. So it'll be interesting to see where ASX PRL head from here moving forward. Of course, note that a lot of the companies we do discuss in today's video were in the very early stages of their development, as is the green hydrogen sector itself. And so they've got a long time until they bring their projects online. As a result, they're going to be much more inherently volatile and inherently speculative than your conventional blue chips are. Stock number two on the ASX hydrogen list is PH2, pure hydrogen. What's interesting about them is they've got a very broad focus at the moment. They're aiming to really deliver complete hydrogen solutions for commercial and industrial users. They're seeking to produce hydrogen at a range of different hubs on the East Coast, and they've got some interesting partnerships and developments with other companies that they're working on. They really are planning to supply hydrogen to APAC. So this is the broader Asia Pacific region, as well as, of course, domestically in Australia too, but looking at nations like Japan and Korea, which will have significant demand for hydrogen moving forward. If you think about the Asian region, they've got a huge population over there. Of course, being able to produce greener hydrogen is going to be interesting interesting as they can bring down the embodied energy of their ultimate end use cases for their products and their industrial use. So there's a lot of focus on that APAC region moving forward, particularly as the population grows and they have an emerging middle class. Recently, PH2 announced a deal to acquire 24% of H2X with the option to expand that to up to 48%. They're a hydrogen fuel cell company. So they're going to be working on the development and then the commercialization and sale of fuel cell vehicles, which only emit water as the end use. They actually have an initial agreement as well with an organization to develop and supply some trucks. And so this is going to be interesting to see how it plays out. But as mentioned, Pure Hydrogen are looking at that end-to-end -end supply. They've got agreements for H2 storage, H2 transport. They want to become a complete solution as they really ride the tailwinds of this greener hydrogen trend moving forward. Pure Hydrogen Corporation as well are actually looking into turquoise hydrogen, which is another color of the hydrogen rainbow. This leverages methane pyrolysis, which is the holy grail as they've identified it here for hydrogen production, where you have graph graphene and hydrogen produced. Still in the early stages, but it'll be fascinating to see how this research and development phase plays out. Talking about methane pyrolysis and the opportunity for turquoise hydrogen leads us onto the third ASX hydrogen stock to watch, which is the Hazer Group. They've developed their proprietary Hazer process, which produces low emission and low cost hydrogen and with a synthetic graphite byproduct, leveraging methane pyrolysis at the core of it. It's quite an interesting take on it. We all know, of course, about the focus for graphite and how important that will be, particularly with electric vehicles moving forward with a graphite anode. We've, of course, done videos on the graphite sector recently, which you can check out up above if you are interested in their use cases. However, what's fascinating is, of course, they developed two products out of a single feedstock, natural gases. Both products will likely be in demand moving forward, and this is without releasing a carbon waste product. They are fully funded through to CDP, a commercial demonstration project, which they're working on developing at the moment. It's going to cost just over $20 million. They have pushed out the timelines for development a little bit. And the costs have slightly expanded. Of course, we know about the virus. We know about some supply chain issues that have been going on over this past period. It was initially planned for the end of 2021, but they're hoping to have it finalized and ready to go in Q1 2022. Once the commercial demonstration project is proven, they can then roll out processes to potential larger scale plants and then think about commercialization on a much broader scale. And then bringing us on to another ASX hydrogen stock to watch, which is quite an interesting one. It's unique, it's not a pure play, and it's not an early stage hydrogen company like the other three we've looked at, but it is one that will have a formative and transformative role in the industry potentially moving forward. It's Fortescue Metals Group, ASX FMG. Of course, many of you might be more familiar with them as one of the big three iron ore producers in Australia, the fourth largest iron ore producer in the world behind BHP, Rio Tinto and Vale in Brazil. But of course, they have had a stated strategy transition or focus bringing on Fortescue Future Industries, which is a company that will be investing in a global green hydrogen renewables portfolio. Andrew Twiggy Forrest is really pioneering and campaigning for the transition towards green energy. They'll be funding this from 10% of FMG's net profits annually, so they've got significant financial backing, and of course, the capabilities in-house that they'll be able to deploy. 
We know that FMG have focused on getting to carbon neutrality by 2030. And what's interesting is they want to be able to develop out this broader green hydrogen and green industry to hopefully bring down the cost of green energy itself. And then ultimately the Fortescue Metals uh, OPEX as well, which is fascinating. We know that Fortescue had around a $40 cost point for iron ore, but they brought it down to be one of the lowest cost producers of iron ore now in the teens. And they envisage that they'll be able to bring down the cost points as well for green energy and green hydrogen production moving forward. I've got an interesting quote here from Andrew Forrest recently where he stated, we are not an iron ore company. They're a leadership and management company who will be deploying their skills and capabilities to the industries that need the most. They initially identified iron ore around two decades ago and of course have deployed this at a global scale now going from a small company into a true global leader. But they now believe that green hydrogen and this sector is a true opportunity for them and they'll be focusing there. What's interesting about FMG itself is, of course, they'll be aiming to develop out the green hydrogen renewable space, they're investing significantly into it, but they'll also be able to deploy, test and validate this technology within their own processes and obviously be beneficiaries of any improvements and cost reduction that this could bring. They're over the next period looking to test out their green hydrogen in ships and potentially on their rail tracks as well. So it'll be fascinating to see how this goes. And of course, if this is validated, it's a sign of the real use cases that they can then show to other industries and other producers around the world to help them bring down the embodied energy of their production and truly be a pioneer on this. And so then I guess the question is, with all of the excitement and the political focus on green hydrogen and the opportunity that it can bring for a decarbonized society and the ASX hydrogen stocks really pushing upwards over this past six to 12 months and attracting ASX investor interest. The question is, where to from here? Firstly, I'd love to know your thoughts on the sector and which ASX hydrogen stocks you're looking at. So drop in a comment below. If you did enjoy this video, don't forget to hit the like button and feel free to share it out as well. As mentioned, we make daily videos, so make sure you've subscribed and turn your bell notifications on so you'll be updated every time we drop a new one. But there is a significant amount of investment going in, both at a government and at a private level. But we will need to see a coordinated investment from both sides of the coin to really deploy and pioneer the sector moving forward. We saw with COP26 and some discussions as well at a national level in Australia, federally, from the government that they recognise the opportunity that green hydrogen can provide for society. And of course, with Andrew Twiggy Forrest really pioneering the sector on the private side and a range of other companies really hoping to continue to drive this movement forward, it'll be fascinating to see how how it plays out. It is worth noting that the sector and many of the players themselves for pre-production, pre-revenue, pre-commercial, the sector itself is still in its very early stages of deployment. It will require significant investment and time as well to eventually get to a commercial scale. Interestingly, Australia is well endowed to facilitate the hydrogen industry. If you think about turquoise hydrogen, of course you need an abundance of natural gas to be able to utilize as a feedstock. If you think about green hydrogen, you need renewable energy at scale to be able to deploy to leverage the green hydrogen process. And Australia is really well endowed on both sides of the coin here. It's going to be interesting to see a broader scale rollout and adoption. We know that renewable energy is still in its relatively early stages as well, though it is starting to pick up pace, but that broader scale rollout of it will enable green hydrogen. I think it's worth noting as well, yes, a significant amount of investment will need to go ahead. But as we've seen with lithium ion battery costs, for example, those have come down over time and moved down the cost curve. And as technologies improve and scale and as more eyes, attention and research goes into it, it's likely that costs will come down with investment in the hydrogen sector. But of course, nobody knows where it's going to head. There's such a broad range of use cases as well. So it'll be interesting to see how industry ends up adopting it and ultimately where it flows through from here. We'd love to know your thoughts on it all, so drop in a comment below what you think. As mentioned, we've looked into a range of different sectors, including the hydrogen one itself recently, so we'll leave links to those videos up above that you can check out after this one. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for joining us. For now, stay well and happy investing.